was not diagnosed until my late 30s. And that was because my oldest brother, Steve, got very sick. They figured out that he had primary hyperoxaluria type one. And so Steve ended up passing away. And then Eric, he had a liver and kidney transplant after his diagnosis. But unfortunately, he just passed away a year and a half ago. When we first found out about the boys having primary hyperoxaluria when Jackson was actually an infant. My biggest fears at this point were, how is this gonna affect their longevity of their life, their quality of life? The hardest part was trying to figure out why I was able to do everything that my friends were doing, yet kind of still struggling with all the things that I was behind the scenes. Kind of having to answer those questions around why are you taking medicine, why are you eating different foods. Never really wanted to sleep out at friends' houses in case something happened and needed to go to the doctor. It's an evil, evil disease, and it, it affects not only the patient, but I think the emotional impact on caregivers is, is really difficult, too. Primary hyperoxaluria is a rare genetic cause of kidney stones and progression to chronic kidney disease, so the patients may have many procedures to take care of the kidney stones over their course of their life. It also requires a very large amount of fluid intake. This is a lifelong disorder, but at this time there's no true treatment. I've passed, I think, two or three kidney stones in the last year. I've had four surgeries in the last two years, and it's become a much harder thing to manage. A typical day in our household is getting multiple drinks ready for the boys to take to school, 80, 80 to 90 ounces, ounces, ounces a yeah. day. We have to drink milk in the morning, then we have to drink, I drink lemonade, he likes apple, yeah, juice. Like apple juice. So basically we do that till the end of the day. With dinner we drink milk. I mean, when you look at someone who has primary hyperoxaluria, you would never know. You know, I had had all the symptoms, and not to know what my future and what my family's future was going to be was very scary. At a certain point in my life, I was faced with the choice of, do you want to keep hiding it and pretending like you're normal, or are you going to own it, let it become part of your life? And that definitely came hand in hand with my involvement with the OHF. So the OHF provides education to patients and then education to physicians and researchers in the field of primary hyperoxaluria. I think having an organization like the OHF where there were other kids and patients with similar experiences to me was always really helpful. They were so helpful for us because our kids got to be in, with other kids that have the same disease. They can just interact and see that they're not alone. They had recently had a conference and you go and you look at the scientific posters, every single poster represents a potential cure for somebody else. OHF supports research every year and funds several grants every year which have been critical in advancing the knowledge of the field of hyperoxaluria. My hopes in the future for the disease is that one of these potential pharmaceutical companies Medication is going to work with very minimal side effects and help patients live a longer, healthier life and not have to worry about having a kidney or liver transplant. Early diagnosis so that other families won't have to go through what my family went through. It would be very important if people could donate to OHF to help them put money towards research on a possible cure so our boys and everyone else that has this, the disease can have a more normal life and make their life easier.